What is going on everyone? So in this week's video, we are going to take a look at the Oru Kayak Bay ST. Now, this is a lightweight folding kayak that folds down to about the size of a suitcase. It only weighs 28 pounds. Now as a matter of full disclosure, I received this kayak in exchange for some video work that I've done with Oru Kayak and they've been an outstanding company to work with. Their emphasis the whole way through has been to produce truthful and honest content. And I really do appreciate that. Before they reached out to me, I was actually already considering buying two of these kayaks. I'd already done some research on them and I was looking to buy two of them, one for myself and one for my wife, so the timing couldn't have been any better. This is a really cool product and I wouldn't have agreed to do this video if I didn't think it was a really cool product. So that all being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the Oru Kayak Bay ST. So let's talk a little bit about the design. So I'm gonna start by saying that this is the first kayak that I've ever owned. I've actually wanted to have a kayak for quite a while now, but the thought of having to store a large non-folding kayak, it's a little bit intimidating. Am I gonna put it in the back patio where it's gonna be baking in the sun all day? Am I gonna put it in the garage where it's gonna be taking up space? Um, so the thought of a folding kayak is much more attractive because it just makes it so much easier to transport it as well as storing it when you're not using it. That is kind of one of the cool things about this design. So when the Bay ST is fully set up, it's gonna measure 12 feet in length, so it's a pretty good sized kayak. And when it's folded down, it's gonna measure 33 inches by 12 inches by 29 inches. It weighs in at 28 pounds. And if you compare that to the weight of a kayak that is a non-folding kayak of kind of similar shape and design and all that, those kayaks are usually gonna be somewhere north of 40 pounds. So there's definitely a bit of a weight savings over a traditional kayak. Um, though, of course, the primary thing is the fact that this one folds down so it's so much easier to transport and also to store. Now here's something that's a little bit surprising. I looked up the weight of some of the inflatable kayaks that are a similar size and similar design. Uh, and those kayaks are somewhere between 35 and 40 pounds. So there's really not much of a weight savings on those compared to a traditional kayak and uh, the Oro Kayak Bay ST is gonna be lighter than all of them, which is kind of cool. So let's talk about the material that the kayak is made of. It's made of this double-walled plastic material, and it's very durable, but also very lightweight. The kayak is formed from one large continuous sheet, so you don't have to worry about leaks or anything else along those lines. The material resists scratches, but it will show rub marks. So an example of this would be, uh, there's a footrest that you have your feet up against as you're kayaking, and this is a very adjustable footrest that you kind of pull towards you or away from you. Um, but if you're really kayaking, you're really kind of working away there, uh, the footrest can hit up against the sides of the kayak. And it's in those areas that you might see some rub marks. It's not a big deal, but just something to be aware of. Uh, it is possible for water to get in between the two different layers of the plastic uh, double layered hull. It's kind of like a, a corrugated material, so there's kind of channels that run the length of the boat and water can get in kind of through the edges. So if you're paddling pretty strong, water's kind of splashed around a little bit, you might get a little bit of water that kind of gets in there. And the trick to getting the water out is to, you wanna have it where the boat is unfolded, but it's not really set up yet. So you have it kind of unfolded as kind of the shell, and you flip it upside down, and then especially if you tip one end up, you'll see that water kind of draining out all the way out to the end, and then you can get the water out of there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about assembly time. So the first time I set up the kayak, I think it took me somewhere between a half hour and 40 minutes because I was just kind of getting familiar with the process. I'd kind of repeat a step over and over again, just kind of get familiar with how everything works. Um, but now it takes me somewhere between six and seven minutes to get it set up. And that's not racing, that's just kind of a, a casual, just kind of normal pace to get it set up. And it takes me about five minutes to break it down. So it's faster to break down than it is to set up. The instructions it comes with, they're very, very good. They're very, very clear. There's good illustrations on the whole thing. So they definitely did very well in that regard. So let's talk about storage space. So that's one of the cool things about this folding design. It opens along the top edge and it gives you a lot of storage space. So if you think about a traditional hard shell kayak, the very front and the very back of the kayak, it's gonna be kind of hard to store stuff in there as it kind of tapers down and trying to reach down in there and grab all the stuff that's in there. But in the case of this kayak, it opens along the top edge. So you actually have three really good storage areas. You have in the very front of the kayak, kind of forward of that first bulkhead. You have the area back behind the seat and then the area behind the bulkhead in the very back of the kayak. The largest area to store stuff is gonna be right back behind your seat. Um, but when you combine that with the very front and the very back of the boat, it's a lot of storage and it's actually pretty easy to get the stuff 
The only catch is that you can't access any of that stuff when you're actually out on the water. You have to have it on land so you can kind of quickly open it up and get to the stuff that's in there. So this is really good if you're you know, hauling stuff with you. If you're gonna go on a paddle trip where you wanna have you know, your, your food, your shelter, all the other stuff that you need, you can have that packed away in there. You can actually carry quite a bit of stuff. As far as stuff that you have access to while you're actually paddling, that's gonna be kind of in the area where you're gonna be sitting. So there's areas kind of off the side of your legs. You can put some kind of small things down in there. But primarily, if you're gonna be carrying like a small camera or something with you, you can either kind of stash it between your legs or there's some um, webbing kind of across the front. You can kind of put stuff on underneath there or kind of attach it to there. So it's actually pretty cool design as far as hauling stuff, um, but definitely as far as accessing equipment, it's gonna be kind of what you have immediately around you. So let's talk a little bit about stability. So the first time I took this kayak out into the water, kind of pushed off from the beach, and I was free floating out there in the water. I did a little bit of this, where I'm just kind of wiggling around a little bit, trying to catch my balance. And it did take a little getting used to, I think part of that's because it is a fairly lightweight kayak and also it's a pretty slim and sleek kayak so it takes a little bit of core strength in order to kind of keep you balanced. It took me about five minutes and that's where I got the hang of it and now it's just kind of a piece of cake. But one of the reasons why I wanted to get a kayak was sort of for the fitness aspects of it and I think the fact that it is such a lightweight kayak and the fact that you have to kind of actively steer it, um, I think that really does help sort of add to the core workout. Along those same lines, let's talk about tracking. So if I get a little bit of momentum here, basically if I want the kayak to sort of stay pointed in the same direction, it definitely helps if I get a little bit of speed, but I do actively have to steer it with every single paddle to sort of keep it pointed at my, uh, my destination off in the distance. And it does work out very well, but again, it does sort of add to the core workout. And the moment you stop actively steering it, uh, it does have a tendency to drift a little bit. And this is especially if you have any wind or waves or anything along those lines. If you want to keep it pointing in a straight direction, you really need to just kind of keep steering with every single paddle in order to get there. Another thing is speed. So I don't necessarily think that a lot of people are going to be buying a folding kayak with speed in mind. Uh, but that being said, I was kind of curious how fast this kayak can go. So I do have a GPS right there, which is strapped to the front of my boat. And let's just do a little sprint here and, and see what I can do. All right, so it shows a maximum speed of 5.5 uh, miles an hour. Which I gotta say, it's pretty decent. I would not be able to sustain that sort of speed for all that long. And certainly if there was wind or waves or anything else along those lines, it would also uh, add to the effort. My uh, wake is catching up to me right now and kind of move me around a little bit here. It was fun, it was really fun. So before I wrap up this review, I just kind of want to talk about the pros and the cons of the design as well as kind of who this kayak is going to be best suited for. So on the pros side of things, so it's very lightweight and compact, which is an obvious plus. This makes it easy to transport both in a vehicle as well as if you're carrying it from your vehicle, you know, out to the water. So uh, really, really nice how kind of light and compact it is. It's also very easy to store and for me this is huge because it means I don't have a kayak sitting out in the back patio kind of baking in the sun all year round or I don't have it kind of standing up on end kind of in the corner of the garage where the spider likes to hang out just waiting for an earthquake to, to knock it over. Uh, so the fact that it stores down really compact is really nice. I can throw it in a closet uh, and, and it's not gonna, it just doesn't get in the way which is, which is pretty awesome. Um, you have excellent amount of storage space within the kayak itself. So if you're going on a paddle trip somewhere, uh, you can put a lot of gear in there, you know, shelter, food, water, everything else you need. Uh, just keep in mind that you really can't access that gear unless you're on land. You have a little bit of limited space as far as what you have access to when you're actually out paddling on the water. 
Uh, the folding design is very easy to clean and dry, which is very nice. There really aren't air any areas that you can't get to. And this is especially important when my wife and I went on our summer camping trip up to Glacier National Park, because we had two of these kayaks and you have to have them inspected by the rangers before going out on some of the lakes. So I was able to kind of open them up on the ground and the rangers can see every square inch of it inside, outside, and was able to verify that it was all clean, dry, and there's no aquatic hitchhikers that would contaminate the lakes up there. Uh, it's definitely a conversation starter. So there's been many times when I've been setting up this kayak um, where people will see it, they'll ask questions about it. Either they've seen it online before, but they haven't seen it in person yet, or they didn't even know that this sort of product even existed, but you'll definitely have some fun conversations with a lot of people. Uh, the design of it being so lightweight is most ideal for use in very calm conditions, really without a lot of wind, without a lot of waves. It's so much more enjoyable in those conditions. I think it's really just because the kayak is so lightweight. Um, and so definitely that's when I prefer to use it. I'll go down to the bay kind of in the morning when the water is nice and glassy and calm. Uh, so ideal for calm water sort of activities. Uh, it's very maneuverable because it is so lightweight. So you can turn pretty fast, you can accelerate pretty fast, you can stop pretty fast. Um, so that's one of the things that's really fun about it. And also I think it's pretty ideal for people that are looking to buy it for fitness. Um, just because it's so much easier to bring with you, but also since it is a very lightweight kayak and since you do have to balance it a little bit more, it does kind of help work the core a little bit in addition to the arms and shoulders and everything else. So on the con side, so it doesn't actively track very well, which means as you're paddling it, you actively have to kind of steer it with each stroke of the paddle. And this might become a little bit of a burden if you're trying to go a very large distance, especially if the water isn't super calm and isn't super glassy, so over kind of open water. Um, but if you're gonna use it for fitness, like how I'm using it, the fact that it doesn't active, actively track well kind of adds to the core workout. So that can also be kind of a plus for some people like myself. Um, and because it is so lightweight, it's definitely more sensitive to wind and to waves than a heavier kayak would be. So definitely something to keep in mind and definitely want to kind of use it in sort of sheltered water. I found that the seat cushion is very comfortable at first, but after about an hour and a half, you're going to wish you had something a little bit more cushier. But usually if I'm out kayaking, I'll be out there for maybe an hour to hour and a half at max anyways. So really not a big issue for me, but if you were going on a paddling trip somewhere where you're out there for hours and hours and hours at a time, you might look into some ways of making that a little bit more comfortable. Now let's talk about price. So this kayak comes in at just under $1,600. So it is not an inexpensive kayak, though it does solve a lot of the problems that most kayaks have. So you have to kind of factor that in and see if it's kind of worth it for you. Though if you like the idea of a folding kayak and you don't really have $1,600 to spend on the kayak, you might want to check out a Kickstarter right now that Oru Kayak has going on. They have a new model out. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit lighter, kind of folds down a little bit more. It's called the Inlet and check that out. There'll be a link down below to their Kickstarter. Um, so it's kind of cool, all the different models that they have. And if you are interested in purchasing a kayak from Oru Kayak, whether it's the Bay ST or some of the other models that they have, you'll find that down below in the description, there is a, a link with a promo code down there where they'll save you 10%. But I do want to thank everyone for watching and we'll see you around next week.